At the age of 17, I was working as a pizza delivery boy for a local pizza place. I was doing it for months by this point. I had done countless deliveries already. My first car was an old, cheap Toyota, so it was perfect for bopping around town with. It was a Friday or Saturday night. I was working the closing shift, which was 12 a.m. It was open later on weekends. This was towards the end of the night, past 11 for sure. My boss, who I'll just call Mario, would always give me the details for the houses I'd be delivering to and their orders. We had an order for one pie to a woman named Karen, ironically. It was an unusually long drive away, about 15 minutes. Most orders come locally around the area, like 5 minutes away on average. I expected a better tip for this reason. I brought the pizza to my car and off I went, listening to my usual playlist on the way. I pulled down the block of the address and pulled up in front of the house. It was a small sized house, as were most of the houses in the area. It seemed to be a lower income area. The lights were on in one of the rooms on the first floor. I was approaching the door, when suddenly a woman called out from a window from the house next door saying, excuse me, that pizza's for us, we gave the wrong address. So I walked next door to the front door and saw that the doorbell was broken. So I opened the storm door and then knocked really loud on the main door. There wasn't an answer for a good 30 seconds, so I knocked again, and I heard a woman's voice on the other side yell one second, but they still took forever to open the door. Another minute passed before the door finally opened, and a woman in probably her mid-40s answered the door. She right away smiled at me and gave this flirtatious head-to-toe stare at me as if she were checking me out. She said in a very loud voice, Chels, come look how handsome the delivery boy is. Another woman about the same age came over to the door, and she did the same thing. Right away I felt my cheeks getting red as I was a bit shy around older women like that. The woman who opened the door, who I'm assuming was Karen, asked me what time I get off work. And that was when I started getting really nervous because I wasn't good at flirting with women at that age. I said this is probably my last delivery, and then one of the women asked me if I wanted to come in and have some wine with them. I knew my friends would all rip on me forever if I blew this opportunity, so I said yeah, sure. They asked how old I was, and I said 21, and then they both laughed, and one of them said they don't care if I'm under 21. They told me to sit on the couch, so I did, and they both sat on either side of me. This whole encounter felt too good to be true to me, nothing like this had ever happened to me before. I had a feeling these two women were already very drunk. From here, the women are both being very flirty with me commenting on my dimples, saying how cute my shyness was, and all this stuff. I was drinking some wine pretending like it didn't taste disgusting to me, because I didn't drink wine at that age at all. The woman Chelsea started saying that they want to show me something in the basement. I laughed and said, what is it? They both laughed and said it's a secret, but that I'll like what it is. They wanted me to go down first. Honestly, I had my own fantasy about what was going to happen in the basement. Unfortunately, it was nowhere near that. I walked over to the doorway of the basement and looked down into the darkness below. I looked back at them and noticed they weren't laughing anymore. They had these blank faces. Only until they noticed me look back at them and they started to laugh and smile again. I said in a firm voice, what's down there? They said almost in unison, it's a surprise. I started to walk slowly down into the basement, asking where the light switch is. One of them said, leave the lights off. Now this part I'm not 100% certain of, but I was looking down into the basement and I thought I saw something move. Something as in a person's arm or hand. I turned around and saw the two women weirdly creeping towards the door sneakily. I stepped out of the basement and shut the door. I told them I need the money for the pizza as I nervously walked around them closer to the front door. This was when I spotted the towering huge man standing in the doorway of an adjacent room, probably the kitchen. His five words have stayed with me all these years later. He said, let's just make this easy. I turned for the door and said the pizza's free. I ran to open it and slammed it behind me, only to hear it open seconds later. I got in my car, locking the door first thing, and that man was already outside my passenger side window looking in. He tried opening the door and then knocked on the glass. I put it in drive and got out of there not looking back. I got back to work and told my boss what happened and why I came back empty handed. He and the rest were in shock. I called the non-emergency number to report what happened, just in case if anything else should be reported at that address again, the police would know something awful's going on in that house. Whatever trap I was about to walk into, thank God I didn't find out what it was.
when I was 19 years old. I was still working at a nearby pizza place to help pay for food and gas and stuff. The job was always pretty easy. Just taking the order, boxing up the food when it's done, putting it in a bag, and driving it to the given address. I'd done it a million times before, and nothing weird ever happened. It was very repetitive. Tips would usually be around 3 to $5, depending on the distance. Sometimes more generous people would give 10 or more, though. I remember this order was just a chicken parm hero and a regular slice. Smaller orders like this usually yielded lesser tips, but I didn't have a choice in which deliveries I did. I was on my way to the address, and of course, the house was apparently on a dead-end block. This block had a more rural feel to it than the rest of the neighborhood. One of the houses had an RV sitting on the grass with a small patch of woods next to it. The other houses looked like little farmhouses. There was a lot more space on this particular street. And then I pulled up to the address. It was this small, weird-looking house with a huge property, though. It sat next to what appeared to be an abandoned house with overgrown grass and shrubs. It was probably around 6 p.m. and it was getting pretty dark out. So it was around the time people would start putting on their lights inside their houses. But all the lights in the house were off, and I noticed the front door seemed cracked open. I began to walk over to the front door, and I heard a piano being played. It sounded like it was a couple rooms away at least, muffled by some walls or a door or something. I knocked on the door and then rang the bell after a few minutes, only the doorbell didn't work. The piano was still playing. I felt weird just walking in, so I walked around the property towards the back. The backyard was a literal mess, things scattered all over the grass. I even saw a broken, rusty chain-link fence just sitting in the middle of the yard. I went to the back door and knocked really loud. I looked through the glass of the door and saw nothing except for what looked like a really messy storm room. Clearly, these people were not neat freaks to say the least. When nobody answered the back door either, I went back around front and called one of the guys at the pizzeria to confirm the address with him. He took a second to check what he wrote down, and he confirmed that I was at the correct address. So I went back to the front door, pushed it open, and heard the creepy sounding piano music still playing. I yelled, pizza's here. The piano stopped. Someone yelled, over here. Then the piano resumed. They were playing this simple yet creepy repetitive song as if on loop. There were also no lights on in this house, so it was almost hard to see in there. I walked straight, getting closer to the sound of the music. The smell inside the house was very musty and off-putting. When I got halfway into, I guess what you'd call the foyer, I felt very uncomfortable. I wasn't going to go any further. I yelled, I'm by the front door, sir. The music stopped, this time for good, and now there was just silence. I backed towards the door again so that I would be closer to the outside. I was expecting to hear footsteps coming towards me, but no, it was just dead silent. I said, sir? And a voice from another room said, Yes, yeah, sorry, I have trouble walking. Could you just bring it in here, please? I asked, What room are you in, sir? And he took a moment to answer back, If you just walk through the living room, I'm in the dining room. There were no directions on the phone to do any of this, so this was very strange. I thought for a second about my next course of action. I felt bad leaving in the case that this was some old, feeble man just living in a messy house. I started walking through the living room, and there was an opening that led to what I presumed to be the dining room. Me being my overly cautious and paranoid self was still suspicious. Instead of walking straight into the dining room, I peeked around the wall just enough for one eye to see into the room. I saw the piano, but there was no one sitting at it. I also didn't see anyone in the entire room. With that, I quietly but quickly walked back towards the front door, shut the door behind me, and drove back to the pizzeria. I explained that I got a sketchy vibe inside the house. My boss was completely understanding, especially when the alleged customer didn't call back asking why I left. That said everything. I didn't really understand the logic in trying to commit a robbery in your own house, and nor did my boss or co-workers. So later that night after work, I looked up that address, and that house was foreclosed on months ago, and it had been vacant. When I told this to everyone, they had the same mouth-dropping reaction I did. I was truly mere steps away from probably getting robbed. That, or someone was trying to play a horrible prank on an unsuspecting pizza delivery guy. It was my last week working at an Italian restaurant. 
It was a half pizzeria, half Italian restaurant, so my duties would switch from shift to shift. Sometimes I'd work the front register in the pizzeria, sometimes I'd be a busboy in the restaurant side, and sometimes I'd be doing deliveries. I liked doing deliveries the most because I'd make tip money. So it was ironic that I left this job with a horrible, scarring experience doing a delivery. It was a late night delivery. Of course, this is when the shady things happen. We got an order for three specialty pizzas. It was a big order, probably like $70 worth of pizza. It was on the bad side of town. This was already a minor red flag. Good thing I drove a crappy old Civic and wouldn't draw any negative attention out in that area, or so I thought. It was a 15 minute drive at least, and when I got to the house, I went up to ring the bell. The door opens within seconds, and this Latino man opens the door halfway, sees the pizzas, opens it fully, exposing the pistol in his hand. I'm not a gun person, but if I had to guess, I'd say it was a Colt 45. But I wasn't really paying attention to what kind of gun it was. My heart basically dropped out of my ass at the first sight of it and realizing the situation. Then two more Latino men came to the door and grabbed me while the first one still had me at gunpoint. They were yelling in Spanish at each other. Then the guy with the gun says in broken English, give me all of your stuff. I said okay, as I could barely breathe or speak due to my panic. I grabbed my wallet, which is all I could really offer him. He then yelled phone, and I gave him my phone as well. It was a Motorola Razor, the iPhone of the 2000s pretty much. One of them even forcibly grabbed my wrist and yanked off my watch. Thankfully, it wasn't an expensive watch. After this, one of them grabbed my ID out of my wallet and read out my address. Then they threatened me, basically saying if I told anybody about this, they'd come to my address and kill my whole family. I said okay, I understand, wanting to cry for help and for my life, but I couldn't. They then pushed me out of the house down the stoop, causing me to land on my hands and knees and start to bleed. They slammed the door shut, and all I had left on me now were my keys. I didn't return back to the pizzeria. I was too shaken and disturbed. I went home, noticeably quiet and shaky. My parents picked up on it. They also saw my scuffed up shorts and my bloody knees. They knew something was wrong, and they tried prying it out of me. I had to tell them the truth. I told them I was robbed at gunpoint on a delivery, and they had our address and threatened to come kill us if I reported them. My dad, who had connections with the police department, right away called the number of one of his close friends, and they immediately did a background check of the person living in that house. His name was Rodrigo. He had four prior felony convictions. And so, my dad, with the help of his police connections, ignoring the threat from the man with the gun, had a squad of police cars surround the house and enter the house with their guns drawn. I wasn't there, of course, but we heard a description of the scene through my dad's connections. Two of the three men were still in the house and were arrested and charged. The man who had four convictions already got a life sentence. One of the guys by his side had a prior conviction and was sentenced to five years. The third guy wasn't in the house and I don't think they ever found him. To this day, he's still out there for all I know. And on several occasions since then, I've woken up to sounds from outside when the windows are open, like footsteps on the side walkway to the backyard or the gate swinging open and closed. It could just be my imagination or being paranoid, but I do still worry for my and my family's well-being. Enough time has passed now that I think that man fled the country or at the very least knows better than to ever show his face in this town again. But still, it is something that hangs in the back of my mind.